Hello, welcome to Footprints. My name is Samuel Atamensa. We'll be taking a short break and when we come back, we'll be speaking uh, to our guest for today. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome back from the break. This is Footprint. And I have with me um, the good professor, Professor Akila Pasoya. Prof, thanks for um, welcoming us to your home. Thank you. Beautiful um, environment. I mean, how, how, how have you been able to keep all these things in, in the heart of Accra? Well, the, 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 the reason really is that my wife is the one who has been most effective in keeping the garden going. <laughs> Fantastic, isn't oh, it? Oh, nice. She's done, she's done absolutely marvelous. Okay. Uh, job because um, <laughs> you you hardly ever find this anywhere. You know, there's hardly anything left in any Africa space now. for that. Even I'm days. telling you, yes. um, yeah. I was yeah. telling my producers that we we better start renting this place <laughs> to do our production. <laughs> <laughs> Prof, how have you been? Very well indeed, except for the um, new situation of the visitor. But there you are. <laughs> COVID-19. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, uh, somebody was making a joke <laughs> that um, he hopes that uh, once we enter uh, 2021, there will be an upgrade which is of less uh, effect. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, but I mean, otherwise, one is managing quite well. Oh, yeah, quite you well, look yeah. very well. Thank you very you much. You look very well. Thank I mean, um, I, I read about your 80th um, birthday. Uh, oh, was yeah. it sometime? 2019. 19. Yes, and, and so for somebody who's <laughs> crossed um, <laughs> 80 years, it is amazing, amazing. Yeah. So when we hear Professor Akila Pasoya, there's, there's, there's one institution that, that always pops up, <laughs> and it has to do with the University of Ghana. Absolutely. And um, not to go ahead of you, but I would want to believe that Prof. Sakila Pasoya is more than what we know of him as the one-time Vice-Chancellor of the University of Ghana. True. So, um, how did it all start? Mm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, my Legon story began before I became Vice-Chancellor, long before. Mm -hmm. In many ways, my fondest memories of Legon were not about my Vice-Chancellor period so much. But my I, I teacher, can imagine. my teacher period, mm -hmm. in the early 1970s. 70s. But because um, Legon wouldn't be your first experience of teaching at that level. Exactly. Can you take us back? Oh, yes, I will. From Achimoto School? I went to the UK, as you probably know, mm -hmm. for studies. Mm -hmm. um, I did my in law studies at the University of Durham, King's yes. College. Yes, okay. University of London for, the, for my master's. masters. So your and master's I, will be an LLM? LLM, oh, okay. yes, LLM um, from the University of London. I then went on to the University of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. To teach? To teach. Wow. So my first job, professional job, was as a lecturer at the University of Dar es Salaam. How did you end up in the ah. University of Dar es Salaam? Well, I was due back at Legon because I got a scholarship from the government mm -hmm. which required I come back to Legon okay. for my master's degree. So at the end of my degree period, I wrote to Legon and said, I'm done, I'm ready to come. And um, there was silence. Yeah. And more silence. And more silence. Yeah. Meanwhile, my supervisor had drawn my um, attention to an opening in Dar es Salaam. Mm. That's your supervisor, University of London. Uh, University of London. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I applied while waiting for Legon. Okay. Legon never came through. Wow. I so therefore took a job in Dar es Salaam. Mm. And when I was about to leave for Dar es Salaam, guess what? Legon popped up. Legon popped up. <laughs> Too late. So I began my professional career in Dar es Salaam. Oh, lovely. And what, what was the experience like well, back in, in the day? Well, in many ways, it was... This was in the late 60s. Yes. Good. 64 is when I went there. Oh, mid-60s, right. Yes. So Nkrumah was still president. Absolutely. Wow. 
You know, my Dar es Salaam visit was probably the most important intervention in my formation. Wow. Because I went there as a young lecturer mm -hmm. into the period of Nyerere's political rising beginnings. Mm -hmm. And the Dar es Salaam atmosphere then was like what it must have been here, I think, in Nkrumah's time in the early stages. Mm -hmm. Because, as you know, Tanzania was at the time Tanganyika for a period. Exploring, yeah, yeah. exploring for itself radical ways of reorganizing a society for delivering on what came to be called African socialism. But the significant feature for me was the openness that I found in Tanzania for outsiders. Mm -hmm. Outsiders who were prepared to work for the country, yeah. think for the country. So, in my very first year of teaching, I was drawn into the world of politics, not in the sense of political parties, Party, partisanship, but yeah. thinking and working on issues to do with political formations, ways of organizing uh, life. How old were you then? I was 23. Whew. And I had students who were older than I was. <laughs> <laughs> but the country was young. Yeah. And therefore, really, everybody who was at the University of Dar es Salaam then was drawn into the life of the country mm -hmm. in a very real sense. Fantastic experience. Wow. And you had, how, old were, how, how, how long were you there? I was there for six years. That's a long time. Long time. So, so I went there as a complete, you know, like, new greenhorn. Yeah. But nobody could spend time in Dar es Salaam of those days without being transformed intellectually, ideologically, mm -hmm. and politically. And I can say that whatever I've done since then influenced th those factors were critical mm. in shaping my thinking, my direction, and the things which I stood for then, yeah. which I still stand for today. Wow. Did you ever meet Nyerere at the time? Uh, Absolutely. In person? Many times. Mm. He was incredible mm -hmm. because he loved the university. Mm -hmm. And you could find him in the early evening wandering around the campus wow. by himself, talking to people lecturers and students incredible atmosphere he was a passionate leader absolutely fantastic fantastic so then come end of your six years mm -hmm. how did you exit from 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 right um, after five years i thought oh i better start coming home yeah, yeah. yeah. and my my family was of course uh, asking are you coming back and so on so by the end of my fifth year i was looking to come back very interesting. <laughs> I wrote to come back to Legon. It was my home. Yeah. And it had a problem. Because I then become a senior lecturer in Dar es Salaam mm -hmm. after four years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> Legon wouldn't recognize well, precisely. <laughs> I was very young and coming back as a senior lecturer. Mm -hmm. So I got there was some difficulty there. But the dean of the university Oh, oh, the faculty. Faculty, yeah. Simpson from Oxford. What, Simpson? Yes, yes, Simpson. Yes, okay. Simpson. Wrote to me a personal letter. Not uh, Bonzi Simpson. No, 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 okay. no, 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 an Englishman. Okay. Oh. This, way back, yeah. Wow. Wrote to me to say, look, um, I want you to come back to Ghana. Don't worry about the position you're going to occupy. Yeah. If you are as good as you say you are, you earned it. You find your place. He was right. Wow. So, having been a senior lecturer in Dar es Salaam, I came back as a lecturer mm -hmm. to Legon. Within a year, I was back up. 
again. <laughs> so it was right. You know, that's how I came back. That's a good one. That's how I came back. So yeah. which year did you come back to Lagos? In 1970. Um, 70, okay. 1970, yeah. So at this time, Nkuma was gone and uh, Buzia was there. Absolutely. A very interesting period, of course, as well. Yeah. On the campus. Yeah, yeah. So my next question was, <laughs> was how, because you had tasted of the interaction between government and, and academia mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. in, in Dar es Salaam. Absolutely. Um, yes. How do you how do you relate that with your first experience back in Ghana? It's quite different. Mm -hmm. Quite different um, because the preparedness of political leaders to engage intellectually with the campus mm -hmm. was not the same here mm -hmm as it was in Dar es Salaam. Understandably, different time of yeah. history and so on. Yeah. But the significant feature for me of the Legon, early Legon years was the very interesting politics of the campus. You mean campus politics? Absolutely. Not national politics no. on campus? Absolutely, no. Mm -hmm. Campus politics. Okay. Because um, the nature. if you remember, with the overthrow of Nkrumah, mm -hmm. there was a reaction to the right on campus. Of course. And by the time I came in 1970, nobody was talking about socialism <laughs> or progressive. Nobody. Only one person I, re I remember. Who's that? Jawa Aponti. Who? Jawa Aponte, you know him. Okay. He passed away a while ago. He was the only person. Jawa? Jawa Aponte. Aponte? Yes. Okay. Ghanaian? Ghanaian. African mm -hmm. studies. Wonderful person. Mm -hmm. He wasn't aggressive. Yeah. But it was quite clear what he stood for. Mm -hmm. And Johnny Hanson, did that ring a bell? Of course, of course, of course. In town. Yeah, yeah. CPP is so, Johnny Hanson. Exactly. Yeah. So, so on campus, there was really a major right-wing yes. dominance. dominance. Yeah. Now, a few of us came together in my early years. I could name a few names. Yeah, please do. Ebo Hatchful. Okay. Ima Hanson, who passed away. Mm -hmm. Chris Hesse in political science. Yeah. And then guess who joined me at the law faculty? Kwesi Boche. Kwesi Boche, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, we linked up with people across the campus mm -hmm. who were progressive. And Kwesi, of course, was coming from Dar es Salaam, by the way. Again? Oh, so you he met him there? He went there after I left. Oh, I see. So he joined me in that, in the, at the He also Ghana. taught there. To the, the faculty. Of course, you after had created um, a good name <laughs> for the Ghanaian. No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But the significant feature was that we then began to argue the progressive cause on campus. Mm -hmm. In a situation in which the dominant ethos was clearly pro Bozia Progress Party and anti Nkrumah. And it took us about maybe a year and a half through the work we did and the campaigns we ran and the lectures we gave to create a wave which was counter to the predominant yeah. ethos. Mm -hmm. The interesting point about that was that the progressive trend which began in that time then morphed after the overthrow of um, Buzia. Buzia by Achampo into the anti-union government struggle. Okay, so you Achampo carried it on. Precisely. Yeah. Therefore, not only the progressive forces on the campus take over the intra-campus conversation, like, yeah. but it also led the, well not led, contributed mm -hmm. to the nationwide groundswell yeah. through our students. Yeah. Because those were days when MOOCs had a serious national impact. Okay, so you're watching Footprint. Um, with Professor 
Akila Pasoya. And I'm sure those of you under 30 years, the <laughs> name may sound like some history personality that, well, indeed, he belongs to. An old man. <laughs> but a very important man. Uh, somebody um, that I, I believe, in my own estimation, that um, defined the modern-day University of Ghana. We'll take a short break. Right back and get into how he eventually ended up <laughs> as a vice chancellor of the University of Ghana. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the program. This is Footprints. My name is Samuel Atamensa, and I'm here with Professor Akila Pasoya, um, one that they used to refer to as Aki. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so yeah. then came Rollins. At this time, you were a senior lecturer. Right. Um, Dr. Akila Pasoya, how did you welcome the news of Jerry Rollins? Well, very interesting because um, because let me just end. because we 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 know and I, I wouldn't say I knew for a, I know for a fact that there's a story has it that even before or between um, the Liman period, mm -hmm. he used to visit University of Ghana campuses. A lot. Mm -hmm. um, do I believe that he used to come to people like yourselves? No. No, that's a very interesting question you raise. Because um, if you remember, I made a point earlier that the union government contestation drew the campus community very actively into national Level, politics yes. mm -hmm. against a champ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All three universities. Absolutely. All three universities <coughs> and so on. And therefore, the student movement was very much aligned to the anti-SMC so. yeah. regime in all kinds of ways. Yes. Therefore, the Rawlings intervention in June 4th was very popular on campus. Oh, so that explains it. Not to do with uh, what he said or didn't say or content, that but he threw out the regime which the students have been campaigning against, against for years. Yeah. So that coincidence yeah. marked the beginning of what you're talking about. Oh, nice. A common interest against that regime. Mm. Mm. And he exploited it. He came there many times, and the students loved him. So, 1985, Announcement made on GBC that there's a new vice chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Akila Pasoya, and then um, there was excitement on campus. No, there wasn't. Okay. To the contrary, there was um, disquiet. Disquiet. Very because interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would that be? Well, I found out afterwards that the. At the time, the campus community, students and lecturers, were unhappy with the PNDC. And they saw my appointment as a PNDC's person okay. coming there. They didn't know me, but they knew me from when I was a lecturer. Lecture, yeah. And so from what I can gather, I'm speaking about what I, was, I found yeah, of out. of course, of course. So when I came in 80, actually I, I got a job in 84, mm -hmm. but began in January 85. Right, yeah. I was very unpopular with some, many of the students mm. and the lecturers. Wow. And this young man from outside, where I see come from, and so, and so, and so, and so. So it was a very rocky beginning for me. Mm -hmm. can imagine. But I was focused. I didn't, I didn't apply for the job. I don't need the job but I'll do the best I can while I'm on it. Yeah. And I'll work with whoever I can work with. Mm -hmm. So even those who were against my appointment, it didn't take very long for them to begin to work with me because who I was- Who are some of those? I won't mention them. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is that there were, there were very strong feelings yeah. against the PNDC government mm -hmm. and therefore yeah. against me you're, you're an extension I, of it i was yeah. seen as a, although i wasn't mm -hmm. yeah. but it took maybe a year and a half to for, for to demonstrate quite clearly what you were yeah, what that i was very much for legon usd and cape coast mm -hmm. of course as you know a few more years later 
I was being attacked by the PNDC, as you know. <laughs> so, so, so it, it took you, a while. Are, you are getting on the student's side. Exactly. That, that, that's what it, it was. That's, that's the way they saw it. Yeah. And um, why not? So tell me. So now. <laughs> 85 86 mm -hmm. and this was right in in the in the, in middle. the middle of the of the revolution absolutely how was decision making like mm -hmm. well i mean on the campus yeah policy or, or policy decisions at the, at the university, the university yeah. oh no oh no the university was interesting because despite the feelings of people about x y and z and so on there were structures mm -hmm. We had boards and committees which worked. And the key factor in the university operation then, and I hope now still, was merit. Mm -hmm. If you were right in your view, it would prevail. By and large, of course, yeah. there were exceptions. So, the, despite the personal feelings we may have, you know, in the Congress Hall, they're drinking a beer, they may say a word or talk about that's fine. Yeah, yeah. But the work of the university itself required serious academic attention. Mm -hmm. And I was prepared to provide that. So all the senior scholars, whether they like me or not, they had to work with you. Well, saw that things were beginning to work. And that I was open to suggestions from anybody. Mm -hmm. And so despite the political ferment outside and the student rows and Luther, the university as a system, which had almost collapsed. I don't yeah. know if you realize yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because apart from the workers' takeover, which I mentioned, mm -hmm. there had been many years of the, the brightest lecturers going abroad. Going out, yeah. yeah. So part of my function was not only to help rebuild the university physically, but also to rebuild the academic traditions, mm -hmm. which had become very, very shaky oh, yeah. at the time. Mm -hmm. You can't blame anybody on campus for that, because life was so hard for them. Things were difficult. Academic wasn't valued. So quite frankly, the quality of academic work had begun to slip. At the time, did the PNDC, uh, did they, did they come after any of your lecturers? Yes. At one point. Very yeah. interesting period. There was a very interesting incident, and I think I should mention the aims now. Yeah. Where there was a, an order for the arrest of some, including Professor Kwame Karakari. You mentioned his name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when the security people came to arrest him. He brought them to me as vice chancellor because you cannot come and pick them up without coming to see me. So when they came to see me, we talked and they couldn't explain why they were picking me. They had orders. So I said, look, if you have orders, one cannot stop you doing your duty. So two things. I will call somebody in town, I won't mention a name, and, and say, look, your people are here to arrest Kwame. It's all right. And I was told, it's okay. You let them do it, it's okay. And the person who was speaking was somebody I had confidence in. Mm -hmm. So Kwame was taken away, I think for a night, and released the day after. And I was called and told, your man is being released. He was picked up again afterwards without my being informed and that's why he was kept. <laughs> but that was, that was the only incident of direct, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you like, um, Because um, there's also a record of, um, during the, the leadership of um, Professor um, Alex Kwapon. Yes. Um, a similar thing occurred. Oh, but that was earlier. Yeah, much earlier. That was in the Nkuma period. In Kuma essentially, period. Kuma time, yeah. Either Jaber Queen or. Uh, mm. uh, yeah. Where soldiers were released to come and arrest lecturers and he had to mm. intervene. Not in my time. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. The nearest we came to that in my time was when the 
government ordered the closure of the universities. As a result of? As a result of a very small event. Uh, even building up, in fairness, there is a long history of Alota. Yeah, yeah. And Alota was not against the university, it was against government. Of all the time. It was building up. So at one point, apparently the, the student leadership accused the Minister of Education of something or other in public. Yeah. Embarrassed him. And the This is under Champo. Or uh, no, under, no, under, under Rollins. Sorry, under Rollins. Yeah, under Rollins. Yeah. And they wanted the universities closed down. All universities. Completely. When the complaint was made about the students' behavior, we were summoned to the castle. castle. Actually, we went to the castle. Um, I think my, I went, the chairman of council, wonderful person, Professor Samuel C, USD. He was the, chancellor, he was the um, chairman of council. We went together to meet the PNDC members to explain that students do that. They make noise on campus, but if you leave them alone, they are okay. They are gone on strike, and they were going to go back to classes because we know they will strike. You, you should know that in your own time. <laughs> you, but you go to lunch. <laughs> no? I normally don't talk about Aluta because... Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but the, the, the government was so irritated by their behavior. We left the meeting with the PNDC, but then we came to campus back. There were policemen behind the police station. We didn't know that. An announcement on radio, campus to be closed by 7 p.m. We were not told, announced on radio. Wow. Close the campuses and clear everybody out by 7. And this will be all three investors. Just like that. Yep. Who was the secretary for was education? It all three? I'm not sure it was all three. I think it was University of Ghana. University first. of Ghana. University yes. of Ghana. Which also caused the others, the others to, to react precisely. Yeah. It was Legon. Mm. There are many, many things yeah. popping up. But that event, you must hear about I must tell you about it. Mm. Because when they said clear the campus by seven, I called a meeting of the executive committee immediately and said, I'm not going to argue about the decision. I'm going to clear the campus. We can argue with the government afterwards. Yeah. First, get students off campus. So we agreed and arranged to clear them off. By about, I don't know, three o'clock, four o'clock, whatever, armored cars rode onto campus. Armored cars. Yeah. I don't know. They are scary things. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, and yes. the police and so on came, and so I went to and and they and they stopped near the Porter Hall. That the roundabout. Yeah, the small roundabout. Yes. And I went and stood. Me and George Bennett, who was my provost, who, who, who took over after you. Yeah. We went and stood in front of the armor cars and the police vehicles and so on. Say, okay, we are clear the campus. Luckily, the police, the, the commander of the units was very reasonable. He had a job you to remember do. him? I can't remember his name. Mm -hmm. He had a job to do, clear the campus. But he was prepared to talk to him and say, look, if you can clear it, I have no problem. So again, we called my friend in town, his <laughs> boss, to say, look, don't let the police go into the halls. Yeah. We will do the clearing ourselves. Mm -hmm. And at seven, you can check. Because my worry was that if the police went to clear the guys from campus, Guess where they go for Conrad Hall? The Vandals. Oh, that would have been well, there something you are. else. That would so, have been something so else. So we arranged for all the lecturers around. Yeah. What get every student of campus. I don't care how you do it. But how did the student leadership react to this? They left like chickens. Oh really? This was no time for getting clever. <laughs> and more cars lined up. Who, no, who, no, no, no. Who, was the, who was the Nooks president at that time? Let me look I, for him. No, no, I, no interesting. <laughs> they, they, they were the one. It's an interesting story. <clears throat> Pastor Bones, that they've been dis, they, they dismissed the leadership. You don't remember that? Oh, I see. Yes. That's the other problem. Okay, so they had been dismissed? Yes. Before by the PNDC. Not by us. Oh, no, of course. Of course. Ah. Yeah. Which was completely improper. 
Uh, who were there? Is, is that Arthur Kennedy? No, 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 before that. After that, sorry. Yeah. I want to think the name. I know the a very mild person. He wasn't a, a radical person, oh. but he was consistent. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we had to clear the campus. And I tell you, that was a miracle. Yeah. How do you clear? There's uh, some students were in town. Yeah, yeah. Have to come back and clear and go out and so on. And so we made sure that the police stayed in their trucks, quite literally, without getting out of the trucks. Mm -hmm. How we cleared. Benny and I, we stood there, talking to them very politely. Oh, we, we, I didn't go to the bathroom, if, wow. if you excuse me, I had to stay there. Yeah. It worked. We had to stop cars of parents and say, please, I beg you, take not just your own, but, but two or three students for me, mm -hmm. and drop them outside the gate. I don't care where you drop where them, you off campus. Wow. And it worked. So by about quarter to seven, campus was clear. Mm. And the police, Turn back. So this and would be in the mid 80s, there about. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Ooh. Very difficult period. Very difficult period. And so, campus, uh, the University of Ghana was closed yes. for how long? For a long time. In, in, in fact, I think following that, the other campuses too mm -hmm. joined in. I think they also closed. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, they, that, that was the culture anyway. But the point we made was that. We did not close the university down. Mm -hmm. Government did. Yeah. You opened it. Yeah. When you were I mean, as students, we always saw the university authorities as an extension of, of, of government. And exactly. so we want to deal with the government by dealing with the exactly. university authorities. Exactly. But that's an interesting point about, mm -hmm. sadly, my period. Mm -hmm. Because I work so closely with the students. Yeah. And that was not the attitude. But I wasn't working with them in the sense of whatever they do was right. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. I was as hard on them mm -hmm. as I was on anybody else. Yeah. But so long as they were within their rights and acting on campus. Let me give you one example. There was one period when the student leadership were marching on the police station across the road, for whatever reason. So I summoned the student leadership, where they were singing and dancing and so on. I called them. I said, look, while you are on campus, I can guarantee your safety. If you go off campus, I can't. One. Two, any crowd which gathers outside the police station and appears to be threatening, you are asking for trouble. So if I were you, I would do it. While we were talking to the leaders, I heard the students singing and marching down to the police station. Mm -hmm. The leaders were with me, but the guys were on their way. Mm -hmm. And they went across the road and sat in the police station, please. Mm -hmm. The grass, in front, grass yeah. singing songs and carrying on. So I called my friend in town and said, my boys are outside your police station. It's okay. They're not going to do anything, please. And he said, well, so long as they are quiet and they don't get to the police station, but if they do, let me tell you something. For the next two hours or so, I sat in my chair frozen. Yeah. Think of my students out there. It takes one mistake by it. one student. Yeah. And then I heard them singing on their way back. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so We're home drive. <laughs> there are many, many things like that happen. Good. Now. So we'll be coming back to some <laughs> of the alutas um, that you experienced yes. um, um, on, 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 or as, as a vice chancellor sure. of the University sure. of Ghana. Sure. So you are watching uh, Footprint. Uh, we'll take a short break. And I particularly want to know how the Commonwealth Hall behaved <laughs> under your leadership. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the program, Footprint here. And um, we have Prof. Akila Pasoya. Uh, Prof, so you, once you superintend over a university like the <laughs> University of, the Ghan of Ghana um, in the 80s into the 90s, definitely, I'm sure you you had encounters with the 
the Commonwealth Hall, a very notorious <laughs> hall. They don't like to be told that, but uh, what were your personal encounters, experiences with them? Very interesting um, period because one thing which I can say for my period as Vice Chancellor was the understanding I reached after a period with my students. As I said, I was prepared to defend the university as a whole against anybody, including the PNDC, mm -hmm. within our rights to be allowed to operate staff, students, workers, whoever. And so the students were sure that so long as they had a case to make, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be on their side. Mm -hmm. This was for me instinctive. I, I, didn't, I didn't plan it. That's the way I operate. Mm -hmm. And so, long story short, by about the middle of my tenure, students were having very big battles with government, as you know, the PNDC yeah, period. Yeah. And therefore, they were doing things on campus which were not your regular academic classes. So a key part of my function was to keep the student body under control on campus so that the academic work could go on, so that those who were not for the political angle they were pushing were free to go about their business. Those who were quiet could be quiet, so nobody forced anybody. So long as they respected that, we could operate. It got, to, it got to a point where the student leadership would come to see me in my house after their rallies. They say, well, they plan to do as well tomorrow. Because <laughs> they are nervous about things. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, okay, but you know the rules. Mm -hmm. So long as you're on campus, you don't disturb classes, you don't hurt anybody, you're wasting your own time, you're covered. And it's incredible the way in which the student leadership, after a while, began to internalize these things themselves. Mm -hmm. That made the Lincoln campus different from other campuses. Because you will never hear a story about the student attacking the vice chancellor or anything. Have you heard that during my time? No, no, no. no. Never. No. Difficult times, plenty of struggles. There was one instance, just to give the flavor of it, where the students were routing and making noise at the gate. And I was passing by, and I saw that they had a, a can of thing they were drinking from. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was. So I went in amongst the students, uh -huh. grabbed the can, uh -huh. and poured it on the ground. And I think about it, I said, wait a minute. What did I just do? Who would do that? <laughs> but I could. No will touch me. Of course. I could go in there, shout at them, stop them from doing it, take out the apprentice away and throw it away, and say, you shouldn't be doing that, and so and so and so on, and still carry on. That is the nature of the yeah. links we have. Do you remember any of the them. student leaders at the time? The names. Well, the one I remember very, very, very clearly one of the early leaders, in fact, he was the first, he was the head of um, the student union the year I was appointed. Okay. You know why I remember him? Mm -hmm. He led a movement against the vice chancellor in my first month or so. <laughs> there was a, 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 a problem with payments from before. Oh, by the way, the the acting vice chancellor was Senan. Okay. Kojo Senan. Senan okay. He was the acting vice chancellor right to go. There was a, a problem with what they call a backlog affair. Apparently, they got some money from government for the students yeah. and not been paid to them yet or something. And they were carrying on about it. 
So in my first month or so, there was a, a student march and a lot and so on. So this time, mm -hmm. governments used to pay students oh, absolutely. allowances for being in the university. I think so, yeah. Uh, there was something paid on their behalf. Yes, yes. But yes. not disclosed to them. Okay. And so when they came to me with all the noise and the, the flags and so on, I said, well, what's it? It turned out that they were claiming something which had to be paid to them. So I had my finance officer there and I said, is that true or not? They said, no, but I said, okay. And I called the student leaders. I said, look, give me two of your Perhaps, accounting uh, people mm -hmm. who sit down with my officers. Mm -hmm. If the money has come, it has come. If it's been spent, well, no, it's in the books. And I was, my, my people told me, you don't do that here. You don't show them the files. <laughs> I'm serious. This is my first month on the job. Wow. Never been a vice chancellor before. And I said, if I don't talk to the students, they will burn the place up. Yeah. So, open the books. So I told the students and my finance was Mr. Abanga, Agana Abanga. It's not, you're not used to this, but please sit down with the students and do the books, show them. And they did. After a while, they came with a report and there was some money left over unspent. And I told Mr. Abanga, divide the amount of money there the number of students on campus mm -hmm. and pay every student that amount. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's two pesos or whatever. whatever. I don't care. Pay them. So every student got a small something. Mm -hmm. By the way, okay. The leader was called Noel Tego. And Noel Tego is a very smart person, currently a consultant working in the UK and so on. But he was here three, four months ago. Noel Tego. I don't forget him. Noel. Noel Tego. Wow. Check him out. Mm -hmm. And he will confirm. You know, it was things like this, where they come demanding things, and we say, hang on, we'll check. Mm -hmm. If you arrive, we'll back you. Yeah. That is the way in which they began to see me, not as the enemy. Yeah. But to work with. You see what I'm getting at? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is something, I didn't plan it. Yeah. But just the nature in which I worked. You know. mm. And um, so, we, 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 later on, you still had some um, student unrests um, regarding change of policy, you know, the pairing of rooms and... Not in my time. Okay. Not in my time. Mm -hmm. But what was the main reason for the unrest? The unrest was... Ah, there was one... Time and I should tell about this very interesting. We were in our Conway Hall and so on. I forget the reason for the unhappiness, but the boycotted classes is on an ex exam time. Mm -hmm. So they won't do the exams. Because? Whatever. I forget the reason. Mm -hmm. And I told them, oh, by the way, earlier, way years before, is this your. Uh, strike, I won't go to classes. It makes no sense. But if you want to do it, I can't stop you. However, if you go on strike and boycott classes for two continuous days, I close the university down. And so you can go sit in the house at home mm -hmm. with your parents and waste time. Mm -hmm. You can go on strike, you can boycott. Second day, you know, you're still not in class. Third day, Close. So they had said they are boycotting classes, they won't do this, exams coming up. So I reminded the leaders of my edict if you don't go to classes for two days continuously, third day, no more classes, you're out at the weekend. So exams begin on Monday. Mm -hmm. Boycott. The previous week had gone on into the so that Sunday, I think George Benny and I went around the halls because ah, students came and saw me. The graduate students came, some came, they want to do the exams, but their colleagues, so why are you telling me? Tell them, mm -hmm. don't come and tell me. I know you want to do the exams, but <laughs> so I went around the halls, 
hall by hall by hall. Say, look, it's up to you. If you choose to not go to classes, you don't do the exams, that's too bad. The halls voted in my absence. Every hall, you couldn't come with hall. <laughs> you had to do the exams. Mm -hmm. But there were the radicals who were against the exams. So it was critical that the exams begin. Because once they begin, they run. Yeah. So I got every hall master and lecturer. One, make sure that the student leave your hall safely. And two, that those who come for the exams can do the exams. I couldn't be sure. Because mm -hmm. they were saying, no, we won't do it at all, and so, so on. Monday morning came, guess what? 10 students go, 12 students go, one go, one, exams began. <laughs> Once the exams began, that was it. That was it. <laughs> uh, That's interesting. Interesting. But so, like so this, yes. after your tenure, so to 1985 up until 1992, Two. January. Wow. Were there any experiences that you regret? Uh, hmm. I cannot think of anything or which anything you would have done differently, differently on yes, hindsight. Thinking back, uh, not really that I can think of. See, because the university was in a in a in a <coughs> and things were so bad before we started. <laughs> but I see they were taking money, they were taking allowances. They had single rooms to themselves, and um, exactly. and then so they said, no, Akila Park came and came to change everything. And suddenly, we don't have food again. We don't... Oh, no, on the contrary. In fact, in fact, no, 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 absolutely. They were never against me. The things were brought by government. Mm -hmm. But they saw the government through you. No, oh, I'm telling you, I was there mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. They may give a report afterwards. Mm -hmm. But I was battling... Not just me personally, yeah, I but I was leading the battle on their behalf. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you one, one story. There was one occasion when, after they stopped feeding them in the halls in the usual manner, George Ben and I went around the hall. We always do that, I'm always looking around, and saw my students receiving food through a window or something. So you bring your bowl and they give you some food. I said, no, you should sit at a table and, and, and so ben, we agreed, better than I, to ask academic board or something to approve mm -hmm. one meal a day at table for the students. It costs money, yeah. but we had, I said, people leave their homes to come to the campus for three years, four years. We must change them. We must move them on. Mm. Part of it is the, the, the culture of talking politely and thinking and planning politely, not just learning and going home. Mm. No. So we will sacrifice the funding required to give the students one meal a day at table. So we did. So on the contrary, I was pushing as hard as I could mm -hmm. to get them to get the minimum but it wasn't easy. <laughs> the money wasn't there. Wow. Mm -hmm. So when you were finally done in 1992, what were your expectations leaving campus? Mm -hmm. Did you live there happy? Did you live there sad? Did you know, you had a hope of getting into academic life again? You know, it's interesting you made that point because um, in my time, you had a five-year contract, renewable. Okay. So I did my first five years. Mm -hmm. I then got a second contract of five more years. But I realized, I felt that this was not for me. Mm. I had to go back to the classroom. Oh. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. So it was a very difficult time for the universities 
So I didn't want to leave immediately. So in my acceptance letter to the chairman of council, I put in a clause. Who was the chairman then? Professor C. Oh, okay. Professor C. I said, I will go for the appointment, I will take it on, but I will not complete my term. But before I leave, I'll give you notice. In writing. Mm -hmm. So, I was at the end of my tenure in my head. Not the year, I had mm -hmm. three more years. And my time was up. I felt back to classroom. So I left the position of vice chancellor before the time of my contract ended and went back to teach in the faculty of law. Wow. That was the first time it had that happened. I don't know if you know. Mm -hmm. Now it happens a lot. Yeah. If this he leaves and he goes to you know, school or something, I stayed at Legon for a year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and thereafter, mm -hmm. you um, got out of Ghana again? Yes. Uh, well, not really. I, I, I got a job working for the Asia of African University, the AAU. AAU, yeah, yeah, yeah. International body, but based yeah. in Accra. Oh, okay. I didn't know it was based in Accra. Yeah, right in Accra here. So I was yeah. international, and they were diplomat, actually, but based in Accra, which okay. was perfect. That's when they had their um, office around the airport. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Near, near the Nyaho Clinic. The Nyaho Clinic. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I was there for oh, 10 years. Wow. 10 years, yeah. Then you must have done something Actually, to it. Actually, more than that, 15 years. Wow. <laughs> so that's, okay, so another um, leg of A whole life. different life, life for me. Wow. And 15 years. What were some of the... Uh, Fantastic period. Mm. The key thing I'll mention, if I'm going to be very brief, was that um, I rose from being director of research, where I started from, mm -hmm. to be the boss, the secretary general. Yeah. Probably the, apart from the question of rebuilding the organization itself. Yeah, that's what I, 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 I thought. I think the most significant things we did during my tenure was a major battle against the ideology of the World Bank, mm -hmm. which at the time preached the notion that um, Basic education, how should I put it so I'm unfair to them? There was more value in spending money on basic education than on higher education. I'm putting it very crudely. Mm -hmm. But essentially, they were making the point to our governments if you got limited funds, spend it on this one, not that one. Not that one, yeah. Now, we argued that not only is that wrong technically, but it's dumb. <laughs> Go home and teach your students. Yeah. Who will treat them when they are sick? So it required the intellectual work of higher education as well. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, many of our governments took them seriously and began to reduce the funding for the universities. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if you know, people talk about the, um, the desperate 1980s. Because in the 80s, funding was so bad for universities in Africa across the board. So the AAU during my tenure took up the battle with the World Bank, arguing that true, we need basic education. Mm -hmm. But we also need a head as well, not just feet and legs. And the battle went on. We had to go and pursue the African Union itself mm -hmm. to back our position. And it took what, five years or so of battling. In the end, we won. Wow and got support for higher education at the same time as for basic. Okay. So, Prof, let me ask this final question. <laughs> it's been many years since you left um, University of Ghana campus, um, at which time we had three main universities. Mm -hmm. um, when you look back and see what has become of the tertiary institution community, what, 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 yeah. what, what are your thoughts? Very, very important question. Um, first of all, it's not my place to judge my successes. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually talking about the, the system. not the University of Ghana, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the whole with the private institutions. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I made the point because 
there's a danger of okay right Being you know what I mean. yes. just conflict, no. yeah however it is true that in some ways the system that we have now has become a little hard to manage okay quite frankly i think it's partly because there has not been sufficient thought in my judgment by policy makers mm -hmm. taking a long view of the system not just changing this and changing that and doing this it's been done a long view of the requirements of tertiary studies not just university tertiary studies and scholarship in any country in the 21st century i do not think that we have thought through sufficiently mm -hmm. tightly what is required now we can't do it perfectly but to to really think what we need to have is say 15 years to keep up and develop yeah. we haven't done it things have happened and we've responded do you get consulted yes mm. occasionally mm -hmm. but only one on one not at the level of higher policy okay no. okay okay no. anyway <laughs> you have paid your dues immensely yes. thank you and thank what you. you did with the university of ghana is there for all to see thank you. and um we would want to end our conversation here today and thank you for um, giving us this opportunity i'm sure those of you who were in uh, in in legon at the time from faculty to the student body who attest to a lot of the things that um, the good professor has said um i i let me curiously, was Professor Albert in there at the time when you were there? Yes. I, in fact, he, he was, as I don't know if you know, he, he was the popular choice for Vice Chancellor. Well, I, uh, I, I didn't want to put uh, that in. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, no. So I met him. Actually, okay. I actually, after I called him after my appointment to say, look, this is a week has come. Mm -hmm. I need your support. But you, you knew him before you left? I did. I did, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was a junior person, so I knew oh, him okay. up there. Oh, know. okay, I see. Yeah. No, but we were, we were close towards the end, mm -hmm. but he, he had to leave. In yeah. fact, he had to leave, yes. Yeah. yes. So we left in a very good spirit, I mean. Nice, yes. nice. Mm -hmm. Prof, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed for the opportunity. You've been watching Footprint on CCTV. My name is Samuel Atamensa, and uh, we've been having a conversation with Professor Akilakpa Soya. See you next time.